Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Adams, and this is a special edition of No Spin Live, where we're going to talk about the Food and Drug Administration just releasing an updated statement on breast implant associated ALCL, which is anaplastic large cell lymphoma. We fielded questions for the past 24 hours from many patients who have questions about this or are wondering about this. So we want to provide a detailed analysis of this FDA update and also provide patients with some saline and important information that was not in the FDA update. Um, I'm glad to have with me here today Jamil Ahmad from Toronto, Ontario, who's well informed on this subject. Jamil, you know, plastic surgeons around the country uh, have been following this for, for many years and actually been getting calls in the past 24 hours about this FDA update. What are your, your thoughts? You know, Bill, thanks for having me on. I think this is a really important issue. We have a lot of patients with breast implants who are now worried, and it's really important that we get correct information out to them. Uh, and there are a lot of questions that we've been asked commonly over the past 24 hours. I think to start, patients are wondering, is this something new about breast implants? Great question. Is This is not new information. This is something that's being researched and we know a lot about. We've known about this for seven to eight years. There's a wealth of information now and understanding of, of what, what this is. Um, the FDA has also been following this and, and they've issued statements about this over the years. And this is just an updated uh, statement. The FDA does follow things closely, but their information sometimes lags behind the published literature and even some of the things that, that are being done, say, at the research level that's cutting edge and, and certainly relevant to, to patients. This is the first time that the FDA acknowledged in their update that breast implant ALCL is associated with one type of breast implant, and that's a, a textured surface breast implant. In fact, there are are about 250 to 350 known cases of breast implant ALCL. Um, but I think what's an important point, and this is not totally clear in the FDA update, is that at no one point has there ever been a case of breast implant ALCL in a smooth implant only, so in a patient that's just had a smooth implant. There were, to be clear, in the FDA update, reports of cases with smooth implants, but those are patients who have had multiple implants. They may have had three sets of implants and at one point one was a textured implant and then they may have had a smooth implant. And I think that's important for patients to know because this does seem to be associated with textured implants. Even today, you know, I've seen patients and a patient asked me today specifically about this and she was having a smooth implant, which is in the United States and I think probably in Canada too, the most common type of breast implant used. And I said, for that patient, because there's never been a reported case, this is not really a relevant concern. It's really more of a concern in people that are using textured implants. So there may be some cases where that's indicated. And that's really where we want to inform patients about what we know and about the, the very small risk of breast implant ALCL associated with a textured implant. Now, naturally, uh, given the history of silicone and breast implants, I mean, does this have anything to do with breast implants having silicone in them? So it has absolutely nothing to do with the filler of the implant. Uh, the silicone implant controversy from many years ago is well known to everybody, but this entity has absolutely nothing to do with the fill of the implant. Now, it does seem to be associated with the surface of the implant, uh, whether it's uh, you know, textured implants, which are um, uh, another characteristic of breast implants. It has nothing to do with the silicone filler. So why, do, why is a uh, textured implant associated with a higher risk? Well, you know, we, we've actually learned a lot in the past three years about what, what this entity is. And it, and it appears that most of these cases are associated with chronic inflammation that's caused by bacteria around the implants. And there's some really interesting research that was done in Sydney, Australia, which, which showed that not only were the vast majority of the cases associated with a high, very high, significantly higher level of bacteria, but a specific type of bacteria. is a gram-negative bacteria called Rastonia piketti. And, and the thinking is, is and this is something that's, that's not a new concept to us in plastic surgery, the most common risk of breast implants is in capsular contracture, and it's really been a colonization or chronic inflammation caused by certain bacteria that causes a capsular contracture or hardening of the breast implant. So that's one host response, but with certain other types of bacteria, 
there may be a different host response and that may lead down the pathway of a, a breast implant ALCL. And right now, um, that's the pervasive theory. There's also a unification theory where it looks at having a textured surface implant, having the chronic inflammation by a certain type of bacteria with a patient who has a certain genetic susceptibility to developing this. And when you take those three things in combination, then this rare disease can be manifested. Many of us believe that this is really doesn't, certainly doesn't behave as a, a true ALCL. This behaves as what we would term a more lymphoproliferative disorder. And so should patients with textured implants be worried? Should they be running to their plastic surgeon and scheduling a surgery to remove their breast implants? This was very clear in the FDA update, and, and they've been consistent on this over the past years of, of following this, that patients with a textured implant that are having no problems should not be worried and they should not have their implants removed. What patients should know is if they have any breast implant, particularly a texture implant, and they undergo unilateral breast swelling or bilateral breast swelling, then they should seek their plastic surgeon for evaluation because that's how most of these cases have presented uh, a fluid collection around the breast. Um, and you know, we tell our patients typically they have some new problem that's out of the norm, they should just go see their plastic surgeon. But unilateral or bilateral swelling of the breast is one thing that patients should definitely seek their plastic surgeon for evaluation. So Bill, can you explain in depth what causes ALCL? Yeah, we've learned a lot about that and I think that we have a lot of data to lead us down the pathway of what we believe is going on. So it seems to be analogous to a couple different things that are, are well established in, in plastic surgery and medicine. So one is capsular contracture, as we've discussed, where there's a colonization of bacteria around the implant, and over time there's chronic inflammation produced by that bacteria, and there can be changes in, in, in certain types of bacteria in the research that has been done. That has been shown to be associated with this breast implant ALCL phenomenon. The other thing that came down with researchers where people say, well, why is textured implants implicated? And it turns out that texture has a higher surface area, a much higher surface area, and there's exponentially more bacteria on surfaces of implants. And actually, we talk about this being associated with textured implants. So the more aggressively textured, or the more highly textured implant, the more surface area, the more bacteria, those implants have had a higher incidence of breast implant ALCL. And actually, in Australia, the, the Australian TGA, which is analogous to the US FDA, just released a statement similar to the FDA update, but they actually specifically said that macro-textured implants had a significantly higher incidence of this uh, compared to more micro-textured implants. And this goes along with all the research data that we've had. So is ALCL a cancer? It was being called a cancer uh, in a lot of the reports that you see, and that's currently what the classification says, but I think it's an important point that the research is pointing that this is probably a lymphoproliferative disorder. And that certainly goes along with what we see clinically when we're treating patients because this behaves much more like a lymphoproliferative disorder than a ALCL. Um, the important point for patients, and again, the FDA in the report mentioned nine deaths. I think those are in the United States. I'm aware there's maybe 12 or 13 deaths worldwide, and that's over the past 55 years of, of breast implant usage. But those deaths all are in patients with unique clinical scenarios where they've had delays in diagnosis or had multiple other issues or neoplasms. In every patient, that we know of today that's been diagnosed with breast implant ALCL that's been treated appropriately. Usually they're presenting with some sort of breast enlargement and a seroma that's, that's, that's drained and analyzed. And then if they are diagnosed with something abnormal, they undergo what's called a capsulectomy, which is removal of the capsule, which is the same treatment that we do for capsular contracture. 100% of those patients have been cured. Yeah, and I think it's important that, uh, you know, early in any disease process, uh, we don't know everything and therefore as things develop we know a lot more to treat it more appropriately and some of those patients who died died of complications of treatments as opposed to ALCL per se. Yeah and you know, actually uh, another uh, paper that was a plastic surgery led paper out of MD Anderson clarified that for 
the surgical and oncology worlds that this is a surgical issue and basically total capsulectomy is curative. Now you talked about some of the current research, so how can plastic surgeons apply that research during breast augmentation to really minimize the risk of a problem like ALCL? Yeah, so this has been a, a focus of, of many of us who've been involved in educating physicians because again, it's so analogous to capsular contracture and what we know prevents capsular contracture and technique things surgeons can do. So we have been very involved with educational things of, of helping surgeons. The current one that we educate people on is called the 14 point plan, which is techniques that we use as surgeons every day to minimize the amount of bacteria around the implant. And so that, that's something that right now that, that many plastic surgeons are using to minimize bacteria around the implants to cause implant related problems that we know are associated with bacteria. You know, there's other research that is, is very good the Aesthetic Surgery Education and Research Foundation, ASURF, um, has commissioned Dr. Marshall Caden, a world's expert in primary cutaneous ALCL, to look at breast implant ALCL, and he's found some very interesting findings. He had a publication in the Aesthetic Surgery Journal last year that looked at biomarkers, and what he found was the biomarkers in breast implant ALCL are identical to the biomarkers in, in cutaneous ALCL, which is, again, the working hypothesis that this is really like a cutaneous ALCL, it's more of a lymphoproliferative disorder. And so that research is exciting and continues to go on. And then the last one that's really in development is this whole concept of uh, unification theory, where you have a combination of things that, that predispose a patient to developing breast implant ALCL. So you have a textured surface implant, you have bacteria, specific types of bacteria that can cause the type of inflammation that can lead down a transformative or, or a, a ALCL type pathway in a patient with a genetic susceptibility. One of the clinical benefits that will come out of that research, uh, one of the things that now is on the focus of, of Dr. Caden's research is that if we know what the biomarkers are, can we do tests? There, there are new tests that we can develop that make it easier to diagnose things. Right now, there's cytological tests and some other tests that we can do, but they're not specific and they don't necessarily stratify patients for developmental risk for this problem, but there may be certain ones that we can assay for uh, in fluid or other blood samples that allow us to not only look at somebody's risk factors for breast implant ALCL, but diagnose it and even possibly uh, treat patients better. So what are the take home messages for patients with breast implants and those considering having breast augmentation with implants? Yeah, so breast implant ALCL, although the classification may change at some point, is a, is a rare disorder. It, it appears to be associated with one type of breast implant, which is a textured surface breast implant. All existing breast implant patients should be aware of this and should they develop unilateral or bilateral breast swelling, they should contact their plastic surgeon and seek an evaluation immediately to rule out this condition. Patients who are desiring implants need to know this information. It's good to know about that. They should be informed about that. And then they should consult with their plastic surgeon to figure out what type of implant would be best suited for them. And lastly, you know, we really do know a lot about this subject now through a lot of good research. And we're doing a lot more research currently that we hope to learn even more that will benefit our patients. Well, Bill, that's great information. I think uh, for our patients, they're really gonna benefit from a better understanding of ALCL, and this is gonna be very helpful for them. And Jamil, you know, it's, uh, it's great to have you here in Dallas. I know it's, uh, you're not always here, but to have your insights here has been very helpful, and I'm sure our viewers really appreciate it. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this special edition of No Spin Live. And if you want to see any more of this, you can see us on theplasticsurgerychannel.com.